So hello, yes it's Joe here from Joyrider TV. We're now going to jump into part two of this presentation on safety and things that we can do to reduce the risks when you go out sailing. The first one, as I mentioned earlier, was make sure that you do put your bungs in. The next one is make sure before you put your boat in the water or if you're rigging a float, do make sure that your sails are hooked up correctly. The best way that I find for checking that the sail is hooked up correctly and it's not going to fall down is put on a little bit of downhaul and then turn the mast from one side to the other a few times, the sail stays up, you've done a good job. Check the rigging, of course. Uh, as I said, make sure you do replace the rigging periodically uh, to avoid any breakages there. But check all of your pins and rings are insecurely, they're all taped up. If your boat is one that bolts together, it's a very good idea to check the bolts at least once a month would be a good period to check as well as the bolts. You want to be checking the trampoline lacing. Uh, if the trampoline lacing has come untied, this is gonna be another problem that you might have to sort out on the water. Much easier to sort it out on land. Make sure your boat is in as good shape as possible before you put it in the water. Uh, make sure the rudders are all working correctly service the rudders regularly and they will serve you well. Any shackles that you're putting on which you're not going to have to take off while you're on the water, make sure you've tightened them, perhaps using a shackle key or a pair of pliers just to make sure that there's no chance that you're going to have a shackle shaking loose which again could really affect your day out. So make sure that everybody going afloat is ready for the physical challenge that may be ahead. Are the people going sailing ill or hung over? That is of course going to affect their ability to cope with situations, especially if things are getting a bit strenuous. Are the skill levels of the sailors enough to deal with the conditions that you are likely to be sailing in. These are all things that should be considered. Are you going sailing with a new crew? What training can you do with that crew before you actually put the boat in the water? Just to give them a little bit more of an idea of what lies ahead. I have actually made a full video on what to expect for the first time crew. So do check that one out as well. Can the people going sailing swim? This may sound obvious, if you go in sailing you should be able to swim, but if you're taking somebody with you who can't swim, that should definitely influence the maximum amount of wind you're gonna be going sailing in, and perhaps get them in the water and see if they can swim a bit in the buoyancy aid before you actually go out. Getting used to being in the water in the buoyancy aid is a very good way also of improving the confidence of a new crew. And then finally with the personnel, make sure that everybody going afloat is dressed correctly for the conditions. You should always be dressing for it being quite a lot colder than you expect. It's much better to be out on the water and be slightly too warm than too cold. Always assume that you're gonna be in the water at some point, you're going to get wet. Also consider that you might be out on the water for a lot longer than you expect. Perhaps you go out and the wind drops or you do have something go wrong with your boat. Better to be prepared to be out for longer. Take water with you, some food, that kind of thing. You should always wear a personal flotation device or buoyancy aid. This is gonna provide some impact protection, 
but also it's going to help you to float if you do find yourself in the water. Good idea to wear a watch. It's nice to know what the time is so that you know how long you've been out. If you're sailing in tide, you'll be able to use your watch to know at what time the tide is going to turn and so on. It's a good idea to wear a hat if it's not so windy, uh, perhaps a helmet if it is windier. Keeping the sun off your head is very sensible. If you're gonna be wearing a trapeze harness, and especially if the trapeze harness is getting a little bit old, do check the condition of the straps because if the harness is getting old, there is a chance that the straps might break. And that can, of course, lead to a man overboard situation. The hook on your trapeze harness should be a quick release hook. That means if you do accidentally get caught on something with the hook, you can pull the release and that will stop you from getting stuck. These hooks you can buy as a replacement part so you could fit one to your older harness or if you are buying a new harness, definitely make sure it's got a quick release hook. And then finally on the what to wear, I would always suggest wearing some sort of shoes or boots, even if it's just for handling the boat on land. Of course, if you're going sailing from a tropical sandy beach where even in the water it's sandy and there's not much wind, going barefoot should be absolutely fine. But even if you do have a sandy beach, you don't know for sure what is going to be underfoot in the shallow water. I would always be slightly cautious and look after your feet. If it's going to be windy, definitely wearing some sailing shoes is a very good idea. They're gonna provide you much better traction on the boat and they're gonna give you much more confidence. So what should you carry with you on your person? This is gonna depend on if you're going out in light winds on a lake or at the other end of the scale might be strong winds to go on a long distance sail on the open sea. A knife, a whistle, a whistle is gonna help you to attract the attention of someone if you do find yourself in the water. Much easier to make a lot of noise with a whistle than it is just shouting. I think these days it's always worth, if you're going out on your own, taking a phone, in a dry bag with a list of useful numbers of people who will actually be able to help you if push comes to shove. It's a good idea to have a length of uh, strong rope, something like a two and a half millimeter, about a meter, two meters of Dyneema in your buoyancy aid pocket. You never know where that might come in really handy. Take some shackles, some pins and some rings with you uh, if you think they can be at all useful, of course. There's no point taking anything with you that you have absolutely zero use for. Uh, you could take a compass with you. If you are sailing on the open sea, then there's sometimes a chance that there might be a fog or mist, which means you won't be able to see where you'll want to go. So a compass can be a real lifesaver there. Of course, these days, if you have taken your phone with you, you should be able to use a map on your phone which should tell you which way your boat is pointing. You should consider taking, especially if you're going sailing on the open sea, a personal locator beacon. This is like a small box that you can carry in your buoyancy aid and this will actually put off a signal which will let other people know exactly where you are. This can actually be the difference between life and death if you have a big man overboard situation in the open sea, especially if there's big waves. Very difficult to see you, but this beacon, they'll be able to find you. And then there's other items which you should consider taking on your boat, a tow rope, or something that can be used for towing. You could take a paddle with you as well. 
the wind gets light or if your mast comes down, again, uh, a paddle can really help to get you back to where it is that you want to go. Like I said before, take some food and water with you. Even if you're just going out for a short sail, you never know when you might be out for longer than you expect. Especially if you're going for a longer sail, taking a waterproof bag with some spare parts that could be useful and other items can really help you out in a push. Things that you could take, a VHF radio, absolutely brilliant for getting in touch with other vessels that are on the water. This isn't gonna be so useful if you're sailing on a small lake, but again, on the open sea, it could really help you out. Uh, taking flares with you. Flares are a great way of letting people know what your location is, if you need to. Well worth considering. A signal mirror can be used to attract people's attention by reflecting the sun. Could be worth putting it in the bag. It's quite a small item, won't take up any space, and you never know when something could end up being extremely useful in your situation. Taking a small first aid kit, again, a very good idea if you are going out sailing and you're likely to be out for some time, perhaps out for a whole day, and you are taking a bag, then better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it, of course. Then to take any tools with you that might be useful, like what is extremely useful is a multi-tool that can do a number of different jobs. Definitely take one with you, better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. And then perhaps it's worth considering taking with you a small anchor as well. If um, things start going wrong, uh, perhaps again, if your mast comes down and you're getting blown onto a rocky shore, having an anchor that you can deploy quite easily will stop your boat from drifting and could actually save your boat. Well worth considering. If you can, never abandon the boat. If you think you can swim to the shore, you might be overestimating your abilities or strength, or perhaps it's a lot further to the shore than you think. You'll be much easier to spot in the water if you stay with your boat. And like I said before, it's unlikely that the boat will sink completely. So staying with the boat is really, really important. And then before you go out, it might be worth considering just these two words, what if. Before you go out, you could think, all right, so what if the mast comes down? What if I fall off the boat? What if the crew falls off the boat? What if I forgot to pack my sandwiches? That kind of thing. Just so that before it happens, you can have a bit of an idea what you would do. Like for example, once again, if the mast comes down, what is going to happen to you and your boat with no mast? Are you gonna get blown onto some rocks? Or is there another sandy beach that you might end up on, which will be far more favorable? Just keep those sort of things in mind. It's gonna give you a much better idea of what is safe. For my own personal experience, what I generally take with me for day-to-day -day sailing in my buoyancy aid is I'll take a length of rope, usually about a metre of two and a half millimetre dynema. Um, I'll take about two or three shackles, some clevis pins and split rings. I'll take a roll of electrical tape and then I'll take a knife which has also got on it a marlin spike, uh, very useful for untying knots. These knives with the marlin spikes are generally very flat, so they'll fit in your buoyancy aid pocket without being so bulky, which is very nice. And I'll take a whistle. And then on the boat, what I will usually take in a day-to-day -day situation is I'll take the writing bag, especially if I'm sailing single-handed, 
because I know that with the writing bag, I can bring the boat back upright, even if there's not any wind at all. And then I'll also take a tow line with me as well. If I was gonna be going on a journey or undertaking a passage on the catamaran, I would really take as much as I possibly could and really keep in mind every single situation that could happen. Uh, one of the main ones and most likely is you will or could end up on your boat for a long time, much longer than you expect. So always expect to be out for a lot longer than you think. So there we go. Thanks again to everybody who's contributed to this. There's a lot there, but I think if you've made it this far, you're gonna be much safer next time you go sailing. Just having these things in mind, and remember that even though it is all <laughs> a lot of fun, there are dangers involved in going sailing. So if you keep those in mind, treat your sailing with a lot of respect because when you stop respecting the elements and the sea, that is when you could really find yourself in trouble. So thanks very much. My name's been Joe. This has been Joyrider TV and I'll be back soon with some more.